Our next speaker um, presented a webinar earlier in the year on a similar topic. And um, from country Victoria, we were all very excited to, to listen to, to Lucy Thomas and her work on craniocervical arterial dissection. Um, Lucy comes from Newcastle University, and I'd like to invite her up to speak. So I'm going to present to you today the um, preliminary results of a prospective study I've, I've been um, involved in, which I'm continuing to be involved in, as part of my um, PhD studies. And I'd like to acknowledge um, my post supervisors, um, who are Professor Darren Rivette and Chris Levi. Okay, so just to give you a background, um, craniocervical arterial dissection, or CAD, um, refers to a dissection of the vertebral or internal carotid arteries, which you can see on the diagram here. The, this sort of dissection accounts for about 10 to 25 percent of um, ischemic stroke in the young to middle age population, um, and 2 percent of all ischemic stroke. And it's becoming more, more readily recognized within the population. It generally affects adults and generally within, with a peak in the 40s, sort of fifth decade, and has an annual incidence of um, 2.5 to 3 per 100,000 head of population for internal carotid artery dissection, so that's a bit more, more popular. And um, vertery, vertebral artery dissection is between 1 and 1.5 and um, cases per 100,000 population. The importance of CAD for us as manual therapists is that the um, presenting features of, of it may well mimic a musculoskeletal disorder. And so this is the danger for us as um, patient, uh, practitioners treating patients with headache or neck pain, that this may be the cause of the pain, that they may actually be having a dissection in progress. When, when we think about manual th if, um, adverse effects of manual therapy, it's, certainly there are minor um, things that happen in terms of adverse events, but of the more serious neurovascular events where it's been possible to identify a definitive cause, dissection of the vertebral or internal, most commonly vertebral artery, um, has been described. So it's of interest to us. Um, an arterial dissection, just to give you a quick um, overview of that, generally you'll get a, um, a tearing of the intimal or media um, layer of the, um, of the artery. The Blood is at arterial pressure enters the is the under the tear and so forces out a, a hematoma, and the hematoma, which is just shown here, um, will disrupt blood flow. And anything that slows blood flow uh, may reduce blood flow to the brain, but more likely will produce embolus formation. And then, as you would would appreciate, the embolus then may, then may travel to the brain and, and cause a stroke. Uh, there are proposed risk factors for dissection, which are well reported in the literature. Um, it's generally considered that there's going to, there will be with a patient an underlying intrinsic susceptibility, and these generally take the form of an arteriopathy or a vascular anomaly or a genetic predisposition. And if a patient has those sorts of predispositions, exposure then to an external trigger, such as a manipulation or some sort of minor mechanical trauma, but also equally um, recent infection may cause um, an artery to dissect. Previous research has, which has been done in this area has largely been um, large case, re retrospective case series um, from a medical perspective. So the, the detail in the medical records um, is potentially has recall bias and it isn't in the depth um, of detail that we would, would require as manual therapists. So the aims of my prospective study uh, were to try and identify the risk factors within the population um, in our local region to see how, how well they reported um, cervical manual therapy to see what, what techniques are most likely to be dangerous um, and to identify key features in both vertebral and internal carotid artery dissection to make it a bit clearer for us to appreciate when one walks through the door. So this was a, a prospective or is a prospective case control study design and patients uh, under 55 who are admitted to hospital in the Hunter region of New, New South Wales, so this is in the sort of Newcastle area, with radiologically confirmed vertebral or internal carotid artery dissection. And we had controls who are age and gender matched um, patients with stroke from some other cause. Um, the methods what are, what's happening is as the patients come into hospital, the patient will be then interviewed 
and um, the, during the interview we collect historical details of the clinical presentation, so how, what things, what things happen and when, and also any preceding, any history of any preceding events that have happened, such as trauma or infection or something like that. Um, we then do a clinical examination looking for signs of um, connective tissue disease. There's a, a 25 point scale um, sort of checklist um, developed by some German authors um, to see if we can see any of the predisposing genetic type um, subclinical or well, minor connective tissue disorders. We're reviewing um, radiological findings to see what features um, are radiological features are associated with the dissection and reviewing blood tests for inflammatory markers. So, so far I've um, slowly collected 11 patients. They don't have dissections very, very frequently in, in um, Newcastle, which is good for them and bad for me. Um, and I've seen three, three control patients. Um, the, the mean age has been 42, which is about right for the um, a population that we expect this stroke to happen in. Um, seven, 64% have been male. And there are actually more vertebral artery dissections than internal carotid in, in the sample, but that's not generally in the population. Um, just to sh show you, uh, this is an MRI of one of the patients. It's quite a nice clear one, so you can see the features. So just to orientate you, this is the teeth here, the um, spinal cord, um, the internal and um, the internal carotid arteries are these black holes here, and the vertebral arteries are shown posteriorly here. This is the left-hand side left is always on that side in an MRI. So you can see that the left-hand side vertebral artery is, is filled with clot. So you have that sort of crescent-shaped um, portion of the lumen which is filled with clot and the flow is just a small darker area. And you can actually see the loop of the vertebral artery here also filled with clot. So this was a good one. Um, this is an MRI on the right-hand side. You can see the internal carotid arteries coming up, the big ones, and then the vertebral, this is the right-sided vertebral, and you compare that to the one on the other side, the left side, you can see it's quite narrowed, and there's a, a point where it becomes very narrow. So when we looked for risk factors within this, within, in this patient group, um, certainly we found that um, the most common finding was that the dissections um, certainly had had some exposure to mechanical neck trauma. Um, luckily for the physio population, they, none of them were um, physiotherapy treatment. There were a couple of people who'd had chiropractic treatment. Um, there were, for the internal carotid arteries, um, there were 60% of them had had a recent infection. So that was interesting. And it wasn't reported, actually wasn't reported in the notes. It was only when we questioned them that we establish these things and the connective tissue um, abnormalities and vascular anomalies weren't present in this group in particular. Um, when we looked at cardiovascular risk factors because these are the sort of factors that would normally would um, cause a person to have a stroke or precede a stroke you can see that in the control group and not surprisingly because they had a stroke they have the general um, risk factors like hypertension, smoking, cholesterol um, Whereas the dissection group, it's much less frequent, with perhaps the exception of um, smoking, where 45% of them were smokers. And smoking is considered to be an, a pro-inflammatory um, thing, you know, changing your, changing your blood characteristics. So th this is higher. 20% is the normal range um, for people in this age group. So this is a bit higher. Um, when we looked at the types of trauma they'd been exposed to, we had a checklist of, of you know, not, not just any old trauma, but particular things. But these were the sorts of things, that, as I said before, the, a couple of them had had manual therapy. Um, there were a couple of patients who'd had uh, done some sort of sporting activity, which involved a jerky sort of head movement. Um, there were a couple of people who'd had a forced expiratory effort. So um, one lady was in labor and had a dissection after that. That's not uncommon. Um, and another guy who'd been lifting over 50 kilo weights in the gym. Um, and there was another couple who had actually carried heavy weights on their shoulders. And one guy had carried an oxygen cylinders, for example. And so there were, there were traumas a little bit more extreme than what you might expect in normal activities of daily living. In terms of the physical characteristics, um, the vertebral arteries generally had a headache and neck pain in the occipital area coming down the posterior part of the neck, but they could, one person actually had um, facial pain, which is less common with vertebral artery. Similarly, with the internal carotid artery dissection, mostly they had retroorbital pain and frontal pain, headache, but 
there were, were a couple who had um, neck pain. So you can't always pick the dissection um, type from the site. Um, in terms of clinical features or, or ischemic, or we would probably understand them as neurological features, um, for the vertebral arteries, the certainly um, dizziness and in, imbalance in were present in a high proportion, but, but not all patients had these features. Um, mo equally high was actually visual deficit, and I'll just talk about that a, in a, again in a minute. Um, for internal carotid artery um, dissection, sorry, they, they also had speech deficit, and again, I'll explain that a little bit more in a moment. The internal carotid artery dissections generally had a facial palsy or a ptosis or a drooping of one eye that more than the other dizziness things which you might expect. Um, and they also had speech deficit. One of the most interesting features I found from interviewing these patients is that 73% of them actually had preceding um, a warning signs, if you like. Easy to see, of course, with the great retrospectoscope, but uh, there were certainly things within their history which were indicative of um, ischemic things happening, transient ischemic sort of features occurring. Um, certainly they had head and neck pain, that won't really help us differentiate them, but 36% of them had visual deficit. Now this, this visual de deficit would only be transient maybe 10 minutes up to 30 minutes, but there were things like blurred vision. Um, one person had hemianopo, which was a bit, more, um, a bit more worrying, but blurred vision, and they would often write them off as, as oh, they're just they were a bit tired or they, they thought they were a bit old because they were 40 and they needed glasses. And, these sorts of things. So the patients themselves were sort of going, oh, well, this wasn't important, but I'm now I'm thinking perhaps it was. And interestingly, 50% of the vertebral artery um, patients had this, had some sort of visual, visual report of visual defici deficit. Um, the speech deficit was less common, but dysphagia was, was the common type of feature. So people were losing words or, or unable to find the right word in conversation temporarily. And again, they would put it down to being tired or or something, but I think we can we can seek these things particularly. And then 27% of them had um, previous um, bal balance or dizziness problems. And these could have, have occurred up to five weeks prior to the dissection. So it was fairly long sort of prodrome to the actual stroke. Um, so in conclusion, uh, will we be able to identify those at risk of, of um, arterial dissection. Certainly mechanical trauma, some sort of minor mechanical trauma seems to be associated. Recent inflection and, and smoking may be associated, but other cardiovascular um, features are not, not so likely, less likely to, so it's not particularly helpful for you to be taking uh, protracted cardiovascular histories, taking blood pressure and that sort of thing, which is good news. Um, are we able to identify dissection in progress? Well, certainly they, have, they certainly have a headache and neck pain, but then lots of other patients do. But they do have ischemic signs and symptoms, but you need to look for them. And we need to, as musculoskeletal physios, need to be a bit more aware of looking for them. So cl clinical implications, I think um, certainly what I can see from what I've um, found so far is that you need to be cautious if you have a pa patient presenting with an unusual um, neck pain or headache. It doesn't have to be particularly severe. Um, but if they've had any history of recent trauma, sporting type trauma, or, or another, seen another therapist for um, manipulation, or, but even, even deep massage, subluxifital massage, then certainly with those patients, really question them very specifically about visual disturbance, balance dis disturbance, and, and speech disturbance, and for any features that they can care to bring up. And you can also observe them for balance and gait abnormalities. Thank you.